As more and more people see Rogue One, we can begin to talk about every aspect of the film with Star Wars fans all over the world. One of the most polarizing characters is someone who first appeared in the series almost 40 years ago. That's Grand Moff Tarkin, who was originally played by Peter Cushion in the 1977 film Star Wars. The British actor, however, died in 1994 at the age of 81. So how exactly did he make an appearance in Rogue One? Well, Cushion reprised his role posthumanly, digitally recreated using CGI. To bring Grand Moff Tarkin back cinematically, the director Gareth Edwards worked closely with visual effects supervisor John Null, who advocated the CGI performance. But while the visual effects would be able to create Cushion's likeness, they wouldn't be able to make the performance from scratch. That's where British actor Guy Henry came in. It was a big ask to ask him to come on board and say to him, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna do this whole big massive role. We're gonna replace you completely digitally with someone else's face and you also have to keep it totally secret and never tell anyone. Guy Henry was then digitally altered in post-production to appear as if he was Cushion. Stephen Stanton, who also voices Tarkin on the show Rebels, provided the voice of the character in Rogue One. The effect was achieved by drawing on the pre-existing footage of the actor, particularly in his work in A New Hope. Hardcore Star Wars fans will know that when director George Lucas filmed the original Star Wars, he had Cushing and other Galactic Imperial officers wearing ill-fitting level boots. Cushing complained so bitterly that Lucas let him wear slippers, forcing the cameraman to shoot from the knees or having him stand behind the Death Star conference table. Subsequently, it made it more difficult for the team working on the digital performance to create the legs and the feet of a CGI Cushing. So now you know how he was created. Now for those of you who noticed and disliked the digital performance, you may have spent more time searching for flaws in the computer generated character, in turn overshadowing anything that actually takes place in the scene. You can't help but admit this goes down as one of the most revolutionary moments in cinematic history. In the next 10 years, audience might be walking out of John Wayne Westerns, an Audrey Hepburn Breakfast at Tiffany sequel, and perhaps a Charlie Chaplin comedy. Perhaps one of the greatest examples to date of a digitally created human in a live action film. However, possible ethical complications do stand. Do you think that studios should be able to bring humans back post death digitally for performances? Do you think this is morally wrong? What do you think about CGI talking? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Flamingo Island.